What's up, guys? Welcome to the Full Spectrum Warriors podcast. My name is Rich Graham, and this episode is sponsored by Grunt Style, the all-American patriotic apparel brand. And uh, today we're going to be joined by Shannon Rush, Navy SEAL, where we talk about all the different ways that the globalist agenda and these tyrants are just pushing their idea of how we should live and how they want the world to be upon us and what we can do to stop it. All right, Shannon, welcome back to the Full Spectrum Warrior Podcast, man. Thanks, man. Good to be back. Good to have you. So if you guys haven't listened to any of the previous podcasts with Shannon, I recommend you do. Shannon is a Navy SEAL veteran. Him and I actually went through SEAL training together back in 2000, 2001-ish, and um, in class 236, and uh, have been friends and doing mayhem together for a long time mm-hmm. and uh, lots of cool stories, lots of cool adventures. And um, Shan is also one of the coaches here at the protector summit and helps with our uh, spiritual coaching and all that. So dude, <laughs> I was asking Shannon, what do you want to talk about today? <laughs> and he was just saying, dude, there's so much going on in the world. Like I don't even know where to start. So for, uh, we're going to get into a few other topics, but man, you, you have so much stuff on your mind right now. It's well, hard not to. Yeah. Why don't you just dive into it and we'll just make a mess and we'll talk about it as we go. Yeah. Um, what an amazing time to be alive. <clears throat> I think it's really easy to get black, black pilled in these times, you know, and throw your hands up and look at the situation and be like, man, what? it's just too big. There's nothing I can do. And I, I think a, in a lot of ways, that's part of the plan and the demoralization phase of where we're at. What you know, with what's going on, you demoralize your enemy, and it's really. I can see how it'd be easy to do that. And as a matter of fact, to be completely honest, sometimes, you know, during the day, I, I get a little. I can be a little black pilled, and you know, get to that effort point as well. But it's important that we as men, as warriors, protectors, leaders, Americans, you know, citizens of this world, that we stay engaged. If we give up now the what is coming with this Agenda 30, our 2030 crap that we have, this Green New Deal crap, these is he ESGs, the DEIs, all this social credit score, central bank digital currency where every track, every movement you make, every purchase is going to be tracked. Literally every aspect of your life will be tracked and graded on some level or another. Um, it's, it'd be much worse if we give up. And the truth is, the reason everything seems so crazy too is because these people, I believe they're in a desperation uh place right now where they are they are going all in you know doubling tripling down on just the absolute gaslighting the deceit the lies the inversion of reality just making it where information out there is so ridiculous that it's hard to filter through everything and understand <clears throat> what is true and what is not true and again that's done on purpose that's a proper uh, you know, propaganda warfare, psychological warfare techniques 101. You know, you flood the space with just so much garbage that nobody can tell what's what and hoping that they'll just throw their hands up and give up and look to an authority. And who's the authority? The people creating the problem, right? The old Hegelian dialect of create a problem, make it so bad that people, then when you present your solution from the problem that you created, while pointing the finger at somebody else for doing it, then you you want whatever kind of chaos you're you're offering the way out of to be what is taken, and you see that right now in this this stabilization of everything. You know, you have energy being shut off in in America. That happened right at the beginning of the Biden administration by design to bring us into this where we are right now, coming out of this four year plan of COVID, which was an absolute masterfully. Um, planned and executed global operation by what people would call the deep state, the real deep state, and what that really is. 
that's why the same plan was here in America that was in Canada that was in you know Australia all these places that's why all the shots were the same everything the 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 amount of money that the hospitals got down to the dollar um was the same everywhere so you you see these this big machine being rolled out in the hopes that it can swallow and the United States up because we can't have the United States a bastion of freedom, the idea of freedom, the idea of being able to thrive, you know, and to create your own way, forge your own path as a man with your heart, with your energy in your hands and have a family and grow and and basically have your own little kingdom. They can't have that for people to aspire to out there with this global machine that they want to introduce with the social credit score and, um, you know, the central bank digital currency where they can track everything that you do. It stands, it's, it's, it's in opposing to it. So this is why the America is in such peril right now. And I don't think it's hopeless by any means. But, you know, the truth is, gentlemen, and I'm talking to the men out there. Um, and ladies, we you have a responsibility in this too. But gentlemen, we've been asleep at the wheel. This is our fault. If you want to know whose fault it is, or you don't have to look any further. And I include myself in that. Um, we fell asleep at the wheel. We got fat, stupid, and lazy and decadent as Americans, and we never we get and egotistical too, arrogant. You know, we're over fighting wars that we should have never been participating in, in areas that we should have never had no business in. Um, yeah, for, we, as men, we got lazy and and we got used to an en- entertainment lifestyle. Yeah, really. And the guys in the in the uh, WEF, they were saying by. 2040, 2050, AI and robots will be able to handle 90% of the jobs. Oh. So 90% of the people are what they're calling going to be useless eaters. Yep. Right? Cattle. And they just say, what do we do with all these people? This is prob- This is part of why they're trying to do the depopulation. They're trying to put it out there as saving the planet. The, mm-hmm. the reality is when people don't have a, like the most dangerous – uh, team guy, right? In the SEALs, guys got in the most trouble when there was nothing to do. Like yeah. idle time is, it is bad. Yep. You know, all the dumb stuff happens when you have idle time. So if you have 90% of the population in idle time with no purpose, no job, whatever. So they're, they're sitting there. I was watching them do their discussions and that little bald headed dude. Yuval. Uh, Yuval yeah, Harari. Yeah. 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 He's up there going. Um, you think that dude's ever been punched in the face? <laughs> Probably not. So that dude's up there is just basically going, or we're trying to focus on how to keep everyone entertained, mm-hmm. right? Their yep. their their goal is that, and and as as men, we've gotten so used to this entertainment lifestyle that uh, that's part of why we've been allowing all this stuff to happen because we've been too busy either working or just looking for for things to entertain us and and they were saying that uh the stats on how much time we spend on our phones just on social media apps how much time we spend watching tv right and movies and all this right uh is massive as far as w- the amount of um, the amount of time we just put into being busy. Yep. Right. Just just to entertain and, and to and it stops our brain from like thinking and, and analyzing and critical thinking, critical developing, thinking yep. skills, creating. I don't have to think. I'm just taking in. I'm not thinking. Yep. Um. But yeah, w- w- you're right. We need to get back on the wheel, and we need to start figuring some of this stuff out because we've passed off our ability to think to robots, essentially. That's one direction that the transhumanist eugenics would take it. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely one of the plans that is laid out and being executed on right now. Um, They see it as this is their world and we're just in their way at this point. They own the world and, um, it, you know, we're in their way. We're useless eaters, like you said. Um, but it, again, I don't think this situation is hopeless. Otherwise, the propaganda wouldn't be as bad as it is. The The efforts to divide people on every level like this by 
you know, by sex, by race, by gender, by, you know, whatever new gender you want to make up, which all that stuff, they just moved from, you know, one problem of where it was gay marriage, but now it's, well, now it's trans rights. So, you know, they're always moving these, these goal poles to make a victim class and then hide behind that victim class for, to basically pass nefarious things and do nefarious things behind that. But um, social class, all these different ways. And unfortunately, some people are so, I want to say at this point, brain damaged from medications, from poisonous poison water, you know, fluoride and chemicals in the water, chemicals in the food, not to mention the uh, bug protein that they're coming out with, which has chitin in it from the actual shell of the bugs, which is extremely poisonous to humans as well. And nine out of the food plants, I know you're like, I ain't eating no damn bugs, but uh, you know, just last year, nine out of 10 of the largest food packaging uh, corporations have introduced it into their products. And they're not even telling you, it's just gonna be in there. It'll be on the box, but you're gonna have to read for it. Another reason not to eat processed food is what I'm getting to. Um, because, and then, you know, these, what are supposed to be medicines and medications that are just poison and in a terrible nutrition, you become brain incapacitated. I mean, mentally incapacitated to some point, uh, foggy mind at the minimum. Right. So you, you got people that don't even have the discernment or the mental capacity to see what's happening in front of them and nor do they care because it also makes you lethargic and apathetic right you add drugs and alcohol into that situation and then a welfare state why the hell would they get off the couch so i I get that there's a a group of people that are going to fall victim to this and probably are not going to be recovered but i do believe there are a lot of good men and women that are not wanting to go on this ride, uh, you know, this transhumanist, this, uh, you know, pedophilic, this um, completely predatory uh, system that's being, that is trying to swallow America right now. Yeah, it's so, only being just shoved in our throats. Yeah, and, and I think that's on purpose because it's, it's a blitz, right? They've been caught, they've been exposed, and now, you know, it, even... Even a couple years ago, you know, people would talk about the New World Order or the Illuminati. And, you know, every idiot you would talk to, like, you're a conspiracy theorist. Even though, that, like, dude, this stuff has been in the open for years now. All you have to do is just read the white papers and the documents of these of these people. They, they literally say out loud at their world government forums, at the WEF, their plans. Like, was, you can watch the videos. You know, you know what I mean? Like, you know what the problem is, though, Shannon? I've... I can't tell you how many times now I've been at family functions or events yeah. where there's lots of people and and people are asking me questions about something and I'm like, yeah, you know, but I mean, the, this is what the World, Eco- World Economic Forum, this is what they said. This is what they said they're going to do. Yeah. And they're like, what's the World Economic Forum? I, and I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, dude, you don't know what that is? And when, the, when we look at um, what the plan of the United Nations is. Yep, Agenda right? 2030. It's pretty and clear. People don't know what that is. And I'm like, and again, they, people will look at you like it's a conspiracy theory. I'm like, dude, it's on their website. Yeah. Go on their website. And I remember I posted this though. Uh, years ago, I posted what is Agenda 2030. Yeah. Right. I, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I remember in Instagram and Facebook, they pulled it down. Yep. They wouldn't let it be shown and it's like yeah. they said i was spreading disinformation for literally putting a link to their to own, their own, own stuff website. yeah I'm like dude this isn't a uh like this isn't a blog this is their website this is what they said that their plan is did it's you know what i mean it, the coordination and again you but you i think talk- a lot of people just they're not aware if well, you're not seeking the information you you, people don't know that the food's being bioengineered people don't know all this stuff unless yeah. you're actively searching it out so I think part of the problem is just ignorance. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, and they're banking on that too. Uh, they know people are lazy, right? And they know if it's not affecting them immediately in a rapid and violent way, then they can incrementally crank this on. And before you know, before you know it, like we are trapped right now, or we're like 
we're fighting to get out of a trap right now as yeah. Americans. But um, it's, it's funny, man. Like, literally this week, they had uh, all these different articles talking about cloud seeding. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, this great new, uh, you know, thing yeah. that we're doing called cloud seeding. And it's actually been an old practice. We've been doing it for a while. And for ski resorts, it helps them with the snow. And for farmers, it helps put more water on the crops. You know, it's such a great thing. And for years, everyone's been like, dude, they're putting out chemtrails. And they're like, no, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. Uh, you're a conspiracy theorist. And and now they're making it like a push, like it's a cool thing to do. And this is great. And every farmer should be cloud seeding above their property. And, uh, oh, yeah, the stuff that's in it is all these hard metal chemicals, but don't worry about that. They even said the FDA uh, has no reason to believe that the chemicals in cloud seeding would have any adverse effects on people, right? Right, like, yeah. I mean, leading cause of dementia is soft metals settling in the brain. So there's that with aluminum. So that doesn't make any damn sense. And they isn't know it, this. Isn't it, it funny that it's like, like it, it's a, aluminum in your deodorant bad. Yep. Aluminum in cloud seeding or uh, a vaccine is good. Mercury in fish, bad. Right. Watch your mercury levels. Don't play with broken thermometers. Right. Don't. right. But, the, but in the vaccine, it's good. Right. Yeah. In these other things, it's okay. You know, lead in paint and ammo and everything else, lead is bad. Right. In these other things, oh, no, it's, you know what, it's okay. Right. Like, the the double standard on this stuff, you know, when we talk about, oh, yeah, trust the science, it's like, dude, this doesn't make any sense. It's all, like, it's all lies when you get to the bottom of it. It's really, again, it's... it. When you look at the plan of it and, and how elaborate it is, it's you have to respect how much work has went into literally everything at this point. You know, like I said, your food, the products that you put on your body with all the endocrine disruptors, uh, your f- processed foods are just poison. McDonald's, all that crap is just poison. Your water, poisoned. You know, you, you have to find a... F- spring and actually get the water tested or but see their test that's even the same thing dude yeah. so so now looking at it they're like fluoride and chlorine in your water is bad right but for the last 50 years they've been saying don't worry there's nothing wrong with drinking fluoride and chlorine <laughs> which it's just makes you stupid kill the yeah. bacteria and it's gonna make your teeth better which is crap it's like it's absolute crap. It's funny. So those same people saying like, oh, yeah, no, cloud seeding. There's no there's no known dangers in that. Well, here's the other thing, too, and you're so right because it's like, oh, no, yeah, chemtrails, you're a conspiracy theory. But geoengineering, you know, yeah, that's good to go. And we've been doing that for 50 years. And as a matter of fact, on record, the Department of Energy, its budget for geoengineering, chemtrails, is six billion a year, and that's open source information. If you want to go get down on that, I mean, look it up. This stuff's out there. It's right in your face, and they play these word games, these mind games with people, just to, it, you know, just like this um, this new deep state article by New York Times, right? Just even months ago, the deep the deep state wasn't real. Deep state. Was yeah, uh, you're a conspiracy theory wearing yeah. QAnon, you know, whatever, right? MAGA, uh, conspiracy theorist, right wing. But just the other day, the New York New York Times, right here, it turns out the deep state is actually kind of awesome. These people are crazy, man. But uh, you know, they also bank on the laziness of people and their short term memories because if they can pe- keep people in a fear based state of mind in a constant stress level, which they do via media and all these other crap that we're bouncing it from one emergency to the next emergency to, you know, all this crap that you see going on in the world, then you're off, you're off balance. You can never get your footing. And that's also a tactic of psychological warfare. So, yeah, I think, I think it was in 2012, Obama rescinded a a law mm -hmm. that said, uh, and I believe the law was put in the place in the, in the 1940s that the U.S. government was not allowed to implement propaganda on its own people. Mm-hmm. And in 2012, Obama rescinded that law or vetoed it or whatever it was. He canceled it out. 
And since 2012, they've been legally allowed to. So when people go, how is it that the Fed, the FBI gave millions of dollars to Twitter right before the election and did election interference, um, you know, between uh, Biden and Trump? How did that happen? How is that legal? It is legal. But, you know, we would say it's not legal, but they rescinded the law that made it not legal uh, in 2012 under President Obama. Yeah. Yep, they sure did. And um, so now you have news organizations like you're talking about where they're just mouthpieces this time, for the guy. Yeah. This time last year, they would gaslight you if you were saying uh, anything about what were you just oh, we talking about so much stuff. What were you just mentioning a minute ago? Which part? <laughs> <laughs> the what was the last thing you were just talking about? Uh, with the chemtrails, the geoengineering, the Department yeah. of Inge- so, Energy. What? So that. Just a, a a year ago, they were saying that that was complete conspiracy theory. Yep. And and now, oh no, the, and the New World Order. Oh yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So they were saying like the that whole thing was total conspiracy theory. You're a freaking tinfoil hat wearing loon. And now they're saying that the deep state is kind of cool. Yep. Right. Not the New World Order, the deep state, but that's also one of the things that they're doing the same thing with. You know, and um. H.R. 4310 in 2012, repealing the Smith Mung Act of 1948, banning the use of domestic propaganda. Yep. But, but, you know, here's the thing is the Operation Mockingbird with the CIA colluding with, you know, um, with the media has been happening for a long time. So it and it's op- absolutely obvious to anybody with any discernment at this point that any of these mainstream or actually I'd say anything on TV at this point is some kind of propaganda. The media outlets for sure, you know, you have to go to independent sources right now and, or, and then, you know, cross check all that. And actually it's getting, it's getting hard to not just with media stuff, but just in the business with these big, these big companies like, like BlackRock and these other giant, um, holding companies. Uh, I was reading an article that was talking about daycare, for example. Yeah. People want to support small businesses. They're like, I'm tired of supporting all these giant, you know, big, uh, corporations. I want to support small business. But what's happening is these big corporations are coming in and they're buying up all the small companies and then they're buying the rights to their story. So they keep the same name. They keep the same family story. The only thing is they came in, they put new managers in it, and now it's owned by this parent company. Yep. But what they're doing, instead of opening like a couple stores around the country, they'll come in and they'll buy up all the competition. That parent company will come in and buy up all the competition. So if they're trying to do daycare, for example, they'll buy up all seven of the daycare area things, and then they're going to price gouge or price fight between them but at the end of the day they're all owned by the same company so collectively they all start raising the price and now there's like daycares that cost more than people's mortgages like people are paying like thirty five hundred dollars a month for daycare and uh and it's all manufactured yeah and but the same thing that they were doing with the housing market where they're coming in and they just bought up what was it 60 percent 40 to 60 percent of all of the privately owned homes were bought up by uh, these big uh, conglomerates. And now they're going to try to rent the houses back to you, not sell them. They want to rent them back to you. Um, and it's basically the same concept where you have these these mega corporations coming in and basically seizing everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, they can print money because they're hand in hand with the banks. So they use all this money that they print to buy physical assets. And then they stick us with all the debts and the bills on the stuff. But we're no longer free in this country, uh, and we haven't been for a long time. Uh, that's just the truth of it. Um, anything that you're paying taxes on or that you're forced to pay taxes on, you don't own it. You're, you're We've become slaves. We've slowly became slaves, again, because we're, we're asleep at the wheel. We don't have chains on us, but... We are in a we're digital slaves at this point. Yeah. Digital debt slaves. A few days ago they just passed another one point two trillion dollar spending <laughs> bill. They had it was over a thousand pages. Ridiculous. They had less than thirty six hours to review the entire bill. Yeah. 
And it's one of those things, like remember Nancy Pelosi with the with the Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. We got to pass it to see what's in it. Yeah, you know what I mean. They push this through, and here they're talking about this is a defense spending bill. <laughs> and then what you find out in there is there's millions of dollars for LGBTQ yeah. things. To, there's there's to things teach your kids to teach your yeah, kids yeah. yeah to push the the introduce the trans, LGBTQ yeah. stuff to children in schools yep um, I saw I saw where there's like 15 million for tuition for Egyptians in Egypt yeah they're not even American citizens that's that's what your tax dollars are going through your your money but, is being worth less and less and less and it's just more it's like so much of this garbage stuff, but it's all money laundering yeah. that's all it is dude but then you look back at it to where again people are like i can't believe this is happening i can't believe this is happening and that's where i was saying to them yeah yeah i can believe it because yeah. go look at the united nations website yep and what they said their goal is for year 2030 Look at what the World Economic Forum is saying with the top 600 billionaires yep. forcing – this is their quote. We need to force behavior. Yep. Right? As Larry through, Fink that said the, that. Yeah. Yep. Through the companies, we need to force behavior because he's talking to the business owners. To That's what make, the ESGs are. Yep to, yep. to make change. And with that, you go – if you read the United Nations – again, we've ha- talked about this on previous podcasts. But if if you haven't read it yet, it says on their website that – they're going to get rid of all poverty and all income inequality. When you read this, it sounds like a really great goal. But then when you go, how do you actually make that happen? And to make that happen to where every country is equal, then you go, if America is a thriving country, then when you go, how come our industry isn't allowed to make anything anymore? Everything is now made in China, Mexico, India, Pakistan. But like they want to push all this uh, this electric vehicle stuff, but we're le- we're literally not legally allowed to produce the stuff that puts together the solar panels and the batteries and all this kind of stuff. We can't manufacture it here. So we're basically taking all of our money and sending it to these other countries Right. And it's by design because they're saying that all the wealth of all countries will be equal. So how do you do that? You take the wealth and you redistribute it right through lawfare uh, to these other countries and you flood the borders with with people. So that way you have to basically implement new tax systems and things like that to make it so that everyone has a, a what is what was it called? A universal income. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so again, people are like, man, I can't believe this. And then you look at what they're doing and this is going to be a controversial statement, right? I'm not saying that Putin is the good guy, but when you look at what the United Nations is trying to do, right. And, and what they actually are doing. And then you look at, uh, someone like Putin, who's been painted to us as the bad guy. And then you look at what he's trying to do within his country of, Banning GMO foods, mm-hmm. right? We're not going to have fake food. We're not going to poison our citizens. We're banning 5G. We're not going to be radiating our citizens. We're banning all this stuff. You're not going to push the LGBTQ stuff on our children. Right. Right. We're we're banning uh, – basically, the, he's trying to keep the traditional values um, alive. And for that, he's – well, people have him as the bad guy for other reasons too. But that's part of what he's being attacked for, for being a bigot. But at the same time, you're like, dude, he he seems like he's taking care of the priorities of his citizens. Yeah. Where our leadership has – hey, They hate us. They don't care what our priorities are. Yeah, they hate us. You know what I mean? If you can't tell by the way that these people treat you, you – like you're in a – you are in an abusive relationship. The government has broke its social contract with you. It hates you. These people hate you. If you – don't know that by the way that you tr- they treat you like you are, have Stockholm syndrome. These people are not; they do not have your best interest in mind, and they haven't in a long time. And, you know, they say whatever you want about Putin, but Russia's the largest country in the world. It's got a lot of natural resources. There's lots of reasons they want to an overthrow and, and a regime change in Russia, but Russia's been 
having invaders attack them now for a thousand years and they haven't been conquered yet. So I, these assholes that wear these lawyers that wear suits and play like they're tough guys up in DC and have never been in a damn fist fight. They don't under they're they're delusional with themselves. They're drunk with power and and quite frankly they're idiots. Um they're and they you know they got us on a collision course on many different fronts here. You know, it's not just Russia which you know now NATO's officially through France saying that they have troops in Ukraine, which we've had troops there. The U.S. has troops there. The Brits have troops there. The French, they're just making it official now. So, you know, you can easily see that situation folding into, well, the French in bed with the Ukrainians. The Russians hit that Ukrainian, you know, uh, force, and they get killed together. NATO troops have been attacked and then okay so now nato's in war with russia officially you can see this being set up well russia just t- today yeah. declared officially that they're declaring war on ukraine so at this point it, it's been a occupation it's ridiculous right it, yeah. so now the 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 words the the le- legality of stuff changes this yeah it does and people this shit needs to stop um I am I am completely anti-war. There's nothing good that comes out of it, especially considering that all these wars are being created by intel agencies all over the world that, again, are – there's got to have some delusional people. So, Shannon, tell us because – so, Shannon was in Ukraine, and we were helping uh, – one of our friends has uh, family there, and they were trying to get some supplies like tourniquets and this and that. Yeah. And, um, and Shannon went over there, uh, and there was, a, a magazine, Requel magazine was going there with him to, to do articles on, you know, just to see what it was. But here we've sent how many billions of dollars now? Have it's over 200 billion. I over think. 200 billion dollars. With no, and here's the thing with no oversight. The no. guys on the grounds, I'll let Shannon talk about it, but like. The, my buddy was asking me to help him get connections for like tourniquets, and I'm like, "Dude, why? Why do we need to send them medical kits? The government just sent them, you know, billions upon billions and billions of dollars. They, wh- why do we need to raise money or, you know, try to get people to donate so they can buy basic medical equipment? Like, isn't that included in that the, the, that money? And the answer is no." A lot of that's not getting anywhere near the front lines, and, and a lot of it's just getting laundered, and people are getting filthy rich off this. What oh, did you okay. see when you were there? Well, yeah. It, let me finish uh, my point. That uh, So y- you got that with with Russia. And, okay, so we went over there. It, it was twofold. It was two – actually, it was threefold. We went over there to help take in supplies for the volunteer Ukrainian army, which we had – we have friends that have personal ties too, right? So these are direct lines to family. So our situation was very unique. It was a, just a two-man small footprint operation. We were picked up um, in Warsaw and then driven across the border. We went in with press credentials, so we were had the ability to take up to 2,500 pounds of gear, which we did, um, and me and this other guy. Uh, we escorted this stuff all the way, you know, to the people that it was supposed to to go to all over Ukraine, including all the way to up to, you know, Bakhmet, um, not into the conflict of it, but, you know, where those guys were there. So um, the the intel line of it was very cool because, you know, you when you're staying with people that are family connected and directly connected into these volunteer armies because you have the Ukrainian army and then you have a whole volunteer army. And really these volunteer armies are just men that, you know, fucking got their boots on and went to the front to fight because it's Ukraine and they're defending their homeland. That's how they see it, you know? And these people, the Ukrainian people are good people, just like we're good people here in America that are victims of corruption you know, uh, corrupt governments. And unfortunately, the United States and the Ukrainian government have been in bed together along with other people and other intel agencies for a long time. They've destroyed Ukraine because 
of, of the strategic place that it is. But there's a lot of bad things that have happened there too. You know, whether that's human trafficking, organ harvesting, bio labs. Like if you can think about it and it's bad shit, it's going down in Ukraine, right? Um, because it's so corrupt, it's just easy to to pump shit through. So you send $200 billion there with no oversight. Of course, it's not getting to the front line. You know, we were taking in tourniquets to these guys um, because they weren't getting what they were needed. Now, there was some really cool warfare that they were doing that um, I learned a lot watching, doing with drones and, you know, some 3D printers and stuff like that, uh, the way they were just building stuff out. And then deploying that, you know, this drone warfare is going to be so fucking scary, dude. Um, especially if it starts happening here. And I I don't doubt that it is coming here. I'd say sooner than later, um, because some of that money, you better bet your ass, is coming back to the United States to fund these sleeper cells that are coming over the border right now with weapons, technologies, uh, and just the money you'll need to launch an, an offensive, whatever that looks like. I think it's going to be BLM, Antifa, and these sleeper cells all activated together. And they're, I'm, I'm mm. seeing, I'm getting eyewitness reports of weapons coming across as well. And the cartels at the border have American gear now. Like, they, so. Not to mention, you know, you think about Hamas and Israel, and we can get into that in a second. I'm going all over the place. But all this stuff is connected, and it's important to understand that. You know, the, these— And it's not accidental. And it's not accidental. Not This is very well planned. It's very well executed. You know, there's a lot of thought, a lot of—like more than $200 billion at this point that's put into this, right? Without oversight. Weapons going over without oversight, right? So— um, long story short, we went over there. Um, I, I did a bunch of interviews with families, um, you know, that where their their houses had blown up, been blown up. They were in or on some kind of front lines at one point in the war to find out what was really going on there. And the truth is, while it was an amazing trip, it, it, it's also a, a, a very sad and depressing trip. You know, the war brings out the very worst in people. And That's on both sides, you know, Russian and Ukrainian. And that's just the truth. Um, People do terrible things. The vampires come out. Kids become, kids disappear, you know. Uh, Monsters do the shit that monsters do when they have the cover of war to do it in. And that's everything you could think of. And probably a lot of shit that you wouldn't want to think of because it'd keep you up at night. But, um we made a short little documentary of it. It's about 35 minutes long. I'm going to have that posted to my website. I've been building out. Um, and, you know, I went over there without a dog in the fight. And then as this pro- progresses, I get, I'm, I'm anti-war. I want this stuff to stop before it gets out of control. Because you look at the, you just look at history in wars, especially these world wars. This is exactly how it starts. You know what I mean? There's little countries that, well, there's countries that have conflict where other countries start getting pulled into it. And you can see this happening in slow motion right now. But the plays, the, the stage is set. You know what I mean? And people are pressing these buttons. And it, you know where it leads to. Unfortunately, we haven't had these kind of weapons that we have now. And not just nuclear, but directed energy weapons, these harp weapons, these weapons that we don't even know about that are being displayed with these lasers and shit. It was interesting with the... I'm not saying that this is what happened in Hawaii, but when they said it looked like it was hit with a laser beam. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, no, 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 that's... That's conspiracy theory. There's nothing like that or whatever. Then literally within the last month, the UK or, How about or Britain, that? Yeah. you know, this does a testing and in, in like a overt testing, not, not a top secret one. Like, and they show the capability of this laser, you know, being used to yeah. take down drones or planes or whatever. They uh, listen, they have them. Yeah. It's, it's just true. They have them, you know, it, yeah, for me at this point in my life, and I've been... But they've had that stuff for a yeah. long time. I've been you know a student I mean? of history and interested yeah. in uh, occult knowledge for since I can remember. I mean, probably since I was 15. So uh, I've always been interested in the unknown or the hidden secrets. and You know, these things that... Which is occult. That's what occult means is it's hidden. It's nothing... Uh, there's nothing bad to it. It's that connotation that's put on it because they don't want you fucking looking at it. Right. So then it's spooky and it's bad. It's just like 
the word conspiracy theory. And any, anytime they name that now, you can pretty much bet that it's true. You know, they're lying to you about something. Um, so, but anyways, it was a, it was an amazing trip and, um, it just hurts your heart seeing that stuff. And then it hurts, it hurts me even more seeing these lunatics push us further and further towards war. And, you know, even here in our country, people talk about civil war and it's like, dude, do you understand how much carnage there would be if that happened? You're, you know, the possibility of your wife and your kids being raped and killed in front of you. Like the, the, especially now with the weapons that we have now, it's not going to be muskets and shit, you know, like there are crazy ass people out there. And, um, I mean, you look at it with just BLM and, you know, Antifa and what they did in 2020, you don't think they're going to be weaponized and funded. Yeah. Like, and that's crazy to see how much damage was done. And they weren't, nothing happened. Nothing happened, but they weren't even really using weapons. I know. You know what I mean? Molotov like, cocktails, baby. Yeah, yep. basic stuff. You know, yep. they put. They, remember, they left the pallets of bricks on the. Oh yeah. You know, just How'd on that the side happen? of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's going to be oh, a riot someone here. Someone happened to leave pallets com- of bricks. Again, completely, com- completely pre-planned. Now, and, and again, but imagine Rich, if that actually had like firearms involved. Now, I want you to think about yeah. this when we're talking about this election cycle coming up and all this stuff happening and two hundred billion disappearing into Ukraine and these people coming over the border and weapons coming. You better goddamn fucking bank on it and get ready for that situation. I hope it doesn't happen, but it is definitely on the table. Again, the stage is set for a bloody confrontation, and that's not anything that I'm calling for, but I'm definitely not naive to the point where I can't see this unfolding, especially when the rhetoric you hear is exactly that, but it's reversed onto me. It's like, oh, the white Christian nationalist man veteran, he's going to cause a terror attack. It's going to be a false flag. He's going to kill a bunch of black people. You know, it's just it's crap. Just where white supremacy is the highest threat to biggest threat to our nation. It's just all bullshit because that's what they want to do. They want We are in false flag season right now, and they are creating situations where it's perfect for where they can detonate something, point it at us, and then activate all these people and say, you come here, we'll give you free stuff, but you got to take it from them. And that's where we're at right now. And that's just, ladies and gentlemen, that's just where we are right now. And that's the truth of it. And I know it's hard to hear and it's hard to digest. And you're thinking, well, not in America. Well, it's son of a bitch. It's happening right now in front of our eyes. And it's time. I'm not saying it's not overcomable but we got to wake up and realize that we're in this situation yeah. and address it. Well, and one of the things that's crazy with this too dude is when when we were down in Brazil working with uh some of those special ops teams to take on the cartel violence, right? Yeah. <clears throat> These guys are so behind the power curve uh they're motivated and they are willing and they have a huge heart, uh, and they fight for their communities. But dudes, they're, they're, they literally have guys roll up with fifty cows to do like a bank robbery and stuff like that. And the and the cops roll up, and it's like, what are we supposed to do about that? Like, we got pistols, and this dude, these guys got fifty cows. You know, <laughs> know it's ridiculous. Vehicles, dude. Uh, we're outgunned. We're outmanned. Yeah, you know what I mean, and. This was all before, like, the the amount of violence that these guys bring, you know what I mean? Especially in Central and South America. Yeah. Like, we don't we don't know that that kind of violence here. You know what I mean? And, oh, man. And, yeah. And the, the how they dismember people and, and all the you know, satanic, <laughs> demonic shit that they do to each other. Yeah. Right? Um, just for... Defilement. Just, yeah, just for psychological warfare. Yeah. Like, uh... We don't we don't really understand that here, and, no. and we we fight through the Geneva Convention. As is there guys in the military have committed war crimes? Like I'm not going to say that there's not. Absolutely, right? dude. I mean, it, but, the, but, yeah. But these guys, that's that's their their mo. Like that's just normal. Yeah, that's day to day. Yeah. Now the thing is, this is before this is when they just had drug money. Yeah. Now what you have is the federal government's issuing out checks of like ten thousand dollars to these people coming across the border. What do you think they're doing with that ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars? Every person that came across that border owes money to the cartel, so we're giving these people 
checks. They, they know that. Money's, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's basically money laundering to the cartels. 100%. And so they- now the cartels who were super, super dangerous and bold and violent just off of drug money, now you start putting into the all this human trafficking money they're making – and with this open border, these guys are getting a foothold and a stronghold within the country. Oh, yeah. Like. They got it. They're not getting it. They have yeah, it. Yeah. This, this, and they're protected too, Rich. That's yep. the other thing. Like, if if I did something, right, uh, or I was put in a situation where I had to do something, I would be the one thrown under the, the bus, under the jail. I would be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law because they're, they're protecting their investment right now. Because these people that are doing that within our government, they know they've sold this country out. So they're making this play and they're going as hard and fast as they can. And, you know, the, the truth of it is they're not even the ones calling the shots. It's people above them that they yeah. have sold us out to. Whether that's China or the World Economic Forum or or probably a combination of the two, you know, um, you're looking at an irregular communist takeover is what we're we're witnessing right now. It's- Another thing that's interesting on that comment. So in our in our legal documents right now, again, through the course of the 1900s, the the presidents had come back in. Oh man, which president was it? Where well, you couldn't look this up on the computer, but they, there's like in the 1940s and the night through the 1960s, um, there's a few that were earlier, but they made it illegal to be part of any communist organization. If you were going to be in the Senate or the Congress um, or the House of Representatives, you had to swear an oath that you had no allegiance and no ties to any communist organizations. Or you you would not be allowed to be in the federal government because you cannot support the Constitution and support communism at the same time. And if your loyalty is to the Constitution and the people of the country, then you cannot be part of the uh, McCarthyism. The McCarthyism. So it's actually a law that you cannot have affiliations with (laughs) communists, but you're not. But no one's enforcing it. Just like right now, you're not allowed to cross the border illegally. But they're not enforcing a law that's already on the books. So you go, man, we need more yeah, laws yeah. to fix this. It's like, dude, the laws it. are there. They're just not they're not enforcing it. Like it's literally when you see these people on on stage, you know, saying that they that they're part of like a communist group or, you know, democratic socialists and all this stuff, like and you go, How could you swear an oath to the constitution to uphold and defend the constitution if you're supporting the fact that you're a socialist or a communist and you're in our own federal government, but that's how, because it, it is actually illegal. Yeah. And what was it? What was it? What? You, you found Oh, yeah, yeah. Computer? McCarthyism is what the, the... The term is? Yeah. So and I see. think that was passed in like around 1940 something. Yeah. It was 1940 to 1950s. There was this... I take this obligation freely. Let's see here government loyalty oath to rose to prominence in the 1940 when, to- when yep. tensions so let's see UC, UC Berkeley so but yeah that, that's when that McCarthyism that era was as well which, but through that yeah through that they actually passed there was like five laws uh-huh that went through <clears throat> and they're still on the book yeah I got you but no one's enforcing them oh yeah well, we got so much of that stuff going on right now. Like, it, I mean, you can look at the border. The we have everything we need. They just they want this is an invasion. It, Again, here's the other thing: don't about, call it's... them migrants. You know what I mean? Migrants is the UN term from it. So then they they have authority over it. it they're illegal immigrant invaders. That's what they that's what they are. We got to quit letting these people change the change the framework of the conversation and then we participate in it right i'm not participating in your word games uh, i'm not i'm not i'm just not going to do it you're not going to frame the conversation and i'm not going to go in there and play your stupid games and and people have to start doing this as well in their own life like quit playing these stupid games with people they they know that words have meanings but also what you're doing is you're trapping yourself in their language you're allowing them to control you so i, I would just encourage everybody like that's one thing we well one one of many things that we have to do it just on an individual level is take back 
you know, our identities of who we are and, you know, well, just being an American white man or, you know, American man or just an American doesn't make me a bad person because I was born here. It doesn't make me racist. I've never owned slave. You know, I, I'm good to everybody until you show me your true colors. I, I just don't see the world that way. Um, and I'm not having your race, your racist ideas forced into my mind. You're not, your mind virus programming is not coming into my mind. I choose to program myself with the truth of the reality, not only that I experience, but that I can learn from others, that I can glean from books, that I can glean from watching other people's lives and taking in information. I, I don't need mommy and daddy on TV telling me what the boundaries are for me to learn and operate within. So we have to take this back as individuals and reclaim what it really means to be American. And being an American is badass, dude, because, you know, we've done a lot of good. Unfortunately, our government has been hijacked by a bunch of criminals. And, you know, hopefully justice will be served. I would like to see that happen. I know, like, when I've messed up and um, done crimes in the past, I had to pay for them. I had to pay the man, you know. And these people are not above the law. Nobody... Uh, but they are acting like they they are. But America and Americans are not our government either. So, and we got to remember that. I'm proud to be an American. Um, I've always wanted to help the world and serve the world. And I've done that in many different ways. Um, I'm not saying all my actions were the correct ones. And looking back at it, you know, I hate that I was um, serving. I love serving in the military and as a Navy SEAL, but I hate that the agenda that I was serving, I didn't understand at the time of what I was doing, really. Um, but I, I couldn't be more proud to have served alongside you and on the level that I did. You know, even though it was for a short amount of time, it really shaped my life and gave me a sense of honor and duty and what respect and what um, being able to live alongside somebody that you live up to. You know what I mean? Like you, your best friends are people you look up to that make you better men. And that will never change for me. And, you know, like having friends like you that have been lifelong friends and, and other guys. But, you know, we, we, as Americans now, we got to reclaim that. I, I don't want to say that pride, but that that identity and what what it means really to be an American. And it isn't all just fat, stupid, lazy, you know, crazy ass people. That's one small piece of America that is being blown up and highlighted to demoralize Americans. There's a lot of very good, good, good American people. And I believe we can still turn this around. I'm not saying it's going to no. be easy, and but it's going to, it has to start with yourself. It has to start with you looking in the mirror and being honest with where we are. I've said this a hundred times and I, and I beat it to death, but we have to be honest about where we are. So that way we can point at it and say, this is the enemy. And this is how the enemy operates. Because if you don't know how your enemy is operating or you can't even identify your enemy, which is another reason they play with words, so you can't even identify who they are, right? That's another reason you get censored. That with all, like All this stuff is overlaid. It's all connected. It's not by coincidence. And you just got to understand it. And once you see it, which is not hard to see, you can respect it for what it is. Like I said, it is a masterful plan. And it's very well thought out from every damn angle you could think of and it's brilliant really but wouldn't it wouldn't the devil's plan be brilliant i mean it's not like this thing you know what i mean the, there's yeah. obviously outside influences from a spiritual world that is seeping over into these people's ideas and and their intellect and the way that they operate you know you can see that through the ritual sacrifices and the stuff that they do with blood rituals you know and they do that specifically because they the way they see children is the closest thing to God. And if my end goal is to hurt God as much as I can, to make it feel pain, to break out of the God matrix, then I destroy the most innocent thing of God's creation in its image. And that's children. So and there's, a, there's a whole podcast with Shannon in one of our previous episodes where we talk about destroying the image bearer. Yeah. So... It, it, you just got, and I know it's really, as I've said this before too, it's hard for good people to put themselves into these dark places and think like that. That's why it's so foreign to us. 
But you, you, that doesn't mean it's not real because this stuff is as real as you as and I, you and I, um, it, it's just a different operating system. So waking up to this and, you know, I, light always wins over darkness. When you open a, a door that doesn't to a room that doesn't have a light on in it with a with a light on in your room, the darkness doesn't spill into the room with light in it. The light always illuminates into the darkness. So, you know, we just got to get our ass up out of bed, wipe our eyes off and turn the light on and start operating out of that truth of who we are as light bearers, as protectors, warriors, servants, Americans, just again, citizens of the world. It's time. We live in an amazing time right now and we have such an amazing opportunity to take control Take control back of our country and lead us into prosperity. Lead us into, you know, a world where there where they, there is all these good things that we can create as humans together with this technology. It doesn't have to be, we don't have to use this technology to destroy ourselves, to spy on everybody, to be like crazy ass people. We can move into a, a beautiful future together. And I believe in humanity and I, I think that's still on the table, but we got some crazy ass people in control of some very powerful yeah. levers right now. And it's going to be a hell of a time to be alive. You know what I mean? Cause I didn't think we were going to see it, dude. And I've said this before. I thought this was going to be several generations down the road, but man, they have went fully operational. It's been four years now since COVID. And that's when they really kicked it off. And you could really see the mask coming off of these people and now it's just right. Like they tell you, they, they're not hiding anymore. Yeah. They tell you exactly who they are and that they want to dominate you and you're going to fucking like it or, you know, so. I think everyone needs to read some uh, personality books and uh, relationship books. And if you haven't studied deep into gaslighting, and projection mm-hmm. and being in a dangerous or an abusive relationship. Stockholm syndrome. Yep. Stockholm syndrome. Like if you don't, uh, if you read some relationship books that really dive into being on the receiving end and the psychology and the psych- psychological side effects of being in an emotionally abusive relationship, um, I, I highly recommend you do that. Because, I second that as well. Because I, the propaganda where you'll go, wow. This person who is manipulating me, who is an abusive boyfriend or girlfriend or coworker or parent, if you take that and then look at how the media, look at how these companies, uh, look how the people in your HR department and the teachers, if you look at how they're communicating with us, this is a textbook example of gaslighting, projection, narcissistic behavior, yep. right? And you are being emotionally abused and you don't even realize it, but you are in a full fledged psychological warfare, emotional abuse. You're emotionally traumatized and we don't even realize it. Most people don't even realize it. And, um, if you're, if what Shannon's saying is you're like, okay, well, I just don't know where to start. I would say that is a great place to start. Because if you don't understand how you're being attacked or what the attack looks like, you don't know how to counter it. So if you understand, if you start to understand what an emu- uh, the propaganda is truly doing, it's emotional and psychological warfare. It's emotional abuse. And when you read these books and you get an understanding of how that actually works and what it looks like, not only will it help with like personal relationships, but you'll see the bigger picture. You're like, oh my gosh. That is exactly what just happened. That mm-hmm. how can they stand up there and just lie to us? You know what I mean? And and try to blame you. Like one of the things America was founded on is individual rights and individual freedoms. Here's a very good example of where you are being gaslit, right? And emotionally uh, persuaded. Remember, the World Economic Forum said we need to force behavior change. Hmm. So they're trying to convince you that if you want to have individual liberties or you want to do what's right for your family, that you're being selfish, that you're not, you know, your kids aren't even yours anymore. They're the communities. Like, who are you to say that those are your kids? Yeah. You know what I mean? You must be a bigot. You must be an abusive parent if you think that those are your property. Right. Right. To, to, um, and there's just so many examples like that where you start to go like, 
oh my gosh, this is this is insanity. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. I'm not, and I'm not the one who's crazy. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's a good place to start. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we got to, we definitely got to get up and engage in on a bunch of different fronts, and you know the. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to have a choice, I don't think, coming pretty soon. Uh, these people are not playing. Um, they're playing for keeps. And it's clear to me, and just in the way that we're being attacked, I mean, and assaulted. Like, we just went through a bioweapon war. And then another one with, you know, the the jabs. That, that was a – we were hit with a bioweapon, and then we were hit with another bioweapon – forced vaccinations and you can say they weren't forced coerced whatever you want to say um but even and, with that now they're putting it in the pork now they're putting it into yeah, the food yeah i know they, like i said they are these people are, are not playing they are moving forward with this agenda and they don't care what you think anymore right I, and i need to be very clear with you they do not care about you um and, and on a lot of levels they hate you um and if you take a step back and look at their actions and look what they're doing, it's it's very clear, and and it's I know it's a hard pill to swallow, and it's it can be very scary. And then again, you can get into these black pill feelings where you're just like, well, shit, man, we're doomed. What's the use? Throw your hands up and quit. But uh, again, I, that's a part of the psychological warfare to keep you off balance. We have to stay engaged, and we have to re-engage more now than ever because. The only reason this stuff was working for the longest time is because it was in the shadows, right? So, you know, and it, you, right, New World Order conspiracy theorists, right? Now they're just out in the open, right? So, and it's very, they tell you what they're going to do. So just listen to them. When people tell you who they are, <laughs> listen to them, especially when it's a psychotic or a sociopath, right? When they tell you they want to kill you. When and, Bill Gates stands up on stage yeah. and says, if we do our vaccines correctly, yeah. it should reduce the population by 15%. Yeah. And our when, goal is for 30. 30 would be great, but if we do the vaccine correctly, we should see a 15% reduction in population. Yeah. You and know what I mean? Like Eugenesis. That's, you know, there is a depopulation. It's a death cult. It, it, it's just what it is. It, but again... When you expose it and you put light on it, it's very hard for them to operate. But you have to acknowledge that there is an enemy. This is the enemy. This is their stated plan. And holy shit, they are executing it on me right now. So do I ball up like a baby and shit in my pants? Or do I put my pants on, put my boots on and go outside and kick some ass? So whatever that looks like for you in your life right now, that this is where we are. And I know that looks different to a lot of different people because people's family dynamics are different, right? Some of us have wives, some of us has kids, grandkids, dogs, cats, all that crap. So what kicking ass looks like in your life is probably going to look different than what it looks like in my life, in Rich's life. And But do whatever it is that you can do to be effective in your life, um, you know, and nonviolently until it has to be, right? you know, and let's not be silly about stuff. These people are committing acts of violence. They're murdering people. They murdered people with these shots. They murdered people with these bioweapons. They murdered people in hospitals when they put them on uh, ventilators and cranked them up and blew their lungs out and gave them ATZ and all that stuff. They were paid to do this. All right. We're still reeling from that crap. And now we have a full on fledged invasion coming into our country. 30 million people by the time the election gets here, if not more, weapons coming in, drugs coming in. How many hundred thousands of people died last year from fentanyl? We are being chemically attacked. We're being chemically castrated through the crap in our food, the chemicals in the air and the water. It is happening. You know, not to mention, you want to talk about 5G and how that's polluting the air. Like, it, like if you're not again, that, no one ever asked for 5G. No one wanted 5G. Yeah, I didn't ask everyone, for 5G. Everyone was like, "Yeah, 4G is fine." Hey, yeah, let's let, let's just fry everybody. 
Let's make them even more neurotic than they already are, right? So if you're in an area with high 5G and you're not grounding yourself every day, you don't have a grounding mat or you're not standing on, like you are just getting zapped. It, even inside of our house, Wi-Fi, cell phone signals, like none of this stuff was here like this even 20 years ago to the amount of radio waves, microwaves, uh, Wi-Fi, everything in the air now, 5G, just zapping us on that level as well. And, and here's the other thing. They know this stuff. They know what it's doing. They know that the 5G causes, you know, heart uh, palpitations, cancer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just like they know the stuff that they, the preservatives that they put in our food poisons us. Just like they know the fluoride in the water makes you stupid and docile. Just like they know the medicines that they give you actually make you sick. That's why you got to take another medicine for that, for the... It's just out of control at this point. But again, it's not overcomable. Um, and we just got to get back to that. We have, again, we have amazing opportunity right now to create new systems out of this where all of this, all of this knowledge is used for good instead of used by a handful of people to do evil because they're empty inside and they made a deal with the devil and they want to kill as many people as they can on their way down. But I guess what? I have my own plan and it's kicking ass and living a great life and, you know, opposing evil. And that's really the simplicity of it is. How do you overcome hate? You love. And you love by having a family. You do that by loving your friends, by loving your wife, by loving your kids, by loving your dogs, by loving yourself first and foremost properly. And, you know, it's really hard for evil to stand against that. I know they got this big elaborate plan, but um, it is in contradiction to the creator's plan. And I know the creator's plan is going to overcome at the end uh, or even in the middle. I don't even know. That's just going to be a new beginning, really, because it's going to be a new cycle. So yeah, the creator's plan is pretty foolproof. Um, and these people are going against it and trying to create abominations and play God. And unfortunately, it's just not going to work out for them. Um, but gentlemen, we have to get right with God, get healthy right now. It's more important than anything to be in top physical shape, mentally, physically, spiritually, um, emotionally, love as much as you can right now and be sure you're staying in those higher vibrations of energy to to just naturally combat that, you know, and be the light that we're supposed to be in the world. And I just went on a rant, boy. Woo! That was a good one. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Let's I'd, eat. I'd say... Uh... <laughs> I, I, let's wrap up and grab some dinner. Yeah. Um, we got some big training tomorrow. But when when I l- look at all this and it's so overwhelming and there's, again, when you're talking about that back black pill. Yeah. And it's like God's abandoned us kind of thing. Yeah, it's uh, the enemy trying to get that's in there. The enemy. Yeah. I, I would say go back and revisit Job and look at how many hardships he has and how he stayed diligent and, and consistent in his uh, love and faith to God and, and look at revelation, you know, it's been predicted that, that up will be down, you know, yep. truth will be false. You and know, we see it. And, it's like... and, you know, in revelation, in the book of revelation, it says the things that we're experiencing, the way the world will work, right. The way the devil's trying to come in and corrupt everything. It's, it's been predicted. You know what I mean? And the good news is God wins. Yeah. So stay firm in the faith. Yeah. Um, but again, don't roll over and go quietly. You yeah. And, I mean? and the other thing too with that, yes, God's got this, but God wants us to act as well. You know, um, and God can work through us to do amazing things. We're image bearers. And, you know, when you step into that role and you say, I'm going to participate and you ask for your mission and you get it and you start moving in that direction, amazing things will happen in your life because stuff will be revealed to you in a specific way that's only for you from God. And the more you lean into that, the more your mission will become true and clear and, and who you are. And being able to feel that to your very core, um, dude, we're connected directly to the Creator. You lean into that. You can't, you can't out lean God. You know what I mean. You can lean in as hard as you want, and He can still give you more and more and more. So it's a uh, we got this short little amazing life to do 
amazing things, to create amazing things. And I still believe that we'll do that. Um, we're in a test right now, and I think we'll pass that test. And on the other side of this, coming out of this darkness, this dark area, uh, this dark era, because it is a dark time in American and in human history at that, you know, these, there's really evil people doing really evil stuff. But, you know, it's that old saying, the darkest before dawn. And here we are. You know, yeah. Made... And looking back at history, all the big stories are always in yeah. the stories about the overcoming the darkest ages. So. so, yeah. So realize that we're in that moment and realize that we have the we have the opportunity to reach out and choose hope and choose to win like we have that opportunity right now. How awesome is that to be in one of those pivotal moments as a man, as a woman, being fit, able, and to have the mind to engage with your heart um, and your mind and your friends and just doing it because it's the right thing to do. You know, um, that's a pretty, pretty awesome feeling. But I'll end it with that. Pairs. All right, Shannon. That was a lot. That was a lot. It was a whole lot of. <laughs> we did. We just. Uh, I don't know what we actually talked about, but we talked a lot about a lot of it. Yeah, we did. I think so. we got into it. <laughs> it's always fun. We'll do another one. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Buddy. Yep. Well, once again, thank you for tuning in to the Full Spectrum Warriors podcast. Again, today's episode was sponsored by Grunt Style, the all-American patriotic apparel brand. And if you want, you can get some of your own apparel at gruntstyle.com and you can use code RICH15 to get 15% off your orders. So again, check out Grunt Style, a great supporter of the Full Spectrum Warrior podcast. If you like this episode, go ahead and like, leave a comment if you could, or share it with a friend, help us beat the algorithm and continue to get the word out about our values, about our beliefs, and uh, help us fight the cancel culture. All right, see you guys on the next one.